thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I'm Tammy Fields. I'm Sharon Stone in for Greg Angel. Here are your top stories now in 90 seconds. A live look there as people are paying tribute all across the world to the late Queen Elizabeth II. You're looking at the wheel at Icon Park lit up in the Union Jack colors. The Queen died earlier today in Scotland after 70 years on the throne. Governor Ron DeSantis has ordered flags to be flown at half staff in her honor. The Department of Justice is officially appealing the decision to grant former President Donald Trump's team a special master. That person would review documents taken by the feds during the Mar-a-Lago search. The process would slow down the Justice Department's investigation since they'd be temporarily blocked from accessing the files. Central Florida is having a good summer for the tourism development tax. Thursday, Orange County Comptroller Phil Diamond said the county brought in more than $28 million in July. That's more than 15% higher than July of last year. It is also the highest collections for July on record. Speaking of records, we have had a lot of hot weather and stormy weather, too. Yeah, I'm over it. I am, too, <laughs> but I think there's more in store, right, Mallory? Yeah, I think a lot of people are about done with the yeah. last week where we've been dealing with all those showers and storms. The good news is that next week <laughs> we'll see lower rain chances, but tomorrow it's going to be a lot of the same. As you check out Clystron 13 right now, though, a lot of those storms have pushed well to the east of us, and we're quiet inland other than maybe a few sprinkles in southern Brevard and Osceola counties, but through the overnight hours, we are going to stay pretty quiet. And as we check out our temperatures, we're going to be dropping into the mid to low 70s as we head towards sunrise. Partly cloudy skies will kick off our Friday, but it's going to be another active day to end our work week. Decent chance for showers and storms sticking around. Some of those storms once again could be strong. The Queen of England has died at the age of 96. The royal family announced she died Thursday after multiple family members traveled to be by her side after the Queen's doctors raised concerns about her health. Flowers were placed around the British flag outside the embassy in Washington, D.C., and the flag there on Capitol Hill was lowered. The official notice of the Queen's death was posted on the gates of Buckingham Palace as mourners gathered to pay their respects. New British Prime Minister Liz Truss was part of the Queen's last public appearance on Tuesday. Queen Elizabeth II was the rock on which modern Britain was built. King Charles III will address his mother's death publicly tomorrow. A council will also proclaim King Charles as a new sovereign. He is then expected to meet with Prime Minister Liz Truss before addressing the United Kingdom. At 73 years old, Charles is the oldest British royal in history to take the throne. We will have special coverage of the address tomorrow and expert analysis from our team across the country. We'll bring that to you live as it happens here on Spectrum News 13 and on the Spectrum News app. You know, the monarch was able to unify people in the United Kingdom and across the globe during her 70-year reign. Spectrum News 13's Dylan Lyons joins us now live in studio. And an Apopka man you talked to, Dylan, who's from the UK, just talked about the Queen being neutral and a great unifier. That's right, Sharon. And he says even when it came to U.S. presidents, the Queen always showed respect. It's a tough time for Nicholas Grounds and others across the United Kingdom and around the globe as people mourn the loss of Britain's longest reigning monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. Grounds says the Queen exemplified her role and unified everyone, no matter their view. The Queen was just basically exemplary um, in, in one, her neutrality um, on everything. Um, she met and greeted and treated let's say every US president, whether they were Democrat or Republican, whether she liked them or didn't like them, you would never know it because she treated everybody with that, that real royal dignity. He grew up in the UK and moved to the US in the late 80s. For him, Queen Elizabeth is the only queen he has ever known. Ground says you weren't really taught how to curtsy and bow, but just understood it was a tradition and a sign of respect. The queen was someone to look up to. Um, and I, I just really hope that the, the next generations of royals, um, you know, keep that on. Because the Queen really, in, in 70 years, didn't make mistakes. He believes her ability to connect everyone ties back to one principle. Not only did she unify the people of Great Britain, because she didn't take any side. She was completely neutral. 
And I think that that it is so difficult to do because everybody, if they're given a question, will give their opinion. She never did. And Grounds explains for the Queen, her goal was always simple. It was always duty and country. And he believes the monarchy plays an important role because it helps unify the country. Live in the studio, Dylan Lyon, Spectrum News. Queen Elizabeth is Britain's longest reigning monarch. So for many in the UK, they only know Queen Elizabeth. She spent the last seven decades on the throne. Here tonight to talk about the implications of her loss, UCF History Department Associate Professor Duncan Hardy, thank you for your time. Can you help us understand here, the next steps in this process following the death of a royal versus maybe what we would expect uh, after the death of an American leader? Of course. Uh, so what we need to understand about the British monarch is that they're more or less the equivalent of the American president in that they're the head of state. But at the same time, they have none of the political power of an American president. They're purely symbolic. Um, so they meet other world leaders. They're the figurehead um, of the British state. Um, and they're needed on that level. So somebody needs to fill the job as soon as possible. And we've already heard that the Queen's eldest son, Prince Charles, has now become King Charles III as expected. Um, but yes, at the same time, they have uh, no uh, policy-making power, no political power. And that's part of the appeal of the monarchy, that they stay above the political fray. Do you anticipate that we could see any significant changes in the monarchy, perhaps some kind of global impact, given that that is really an uncertain time in Britain? It's a really interesting question, um, and it's one a lot of people are asking, I think, because, you know, Elizabeth II was a universally admired person. Individually, she uh, represented duty, patriotism, um, and even people who were not fans of the monarchy as an institution admired her as an individual. Um, so that puts a, something of a question mark over the institution of the monarchy in the future, um, in the eyes of some. Um, and so Britain itself is a, something of a crossroads. A few years ago, there was a referendum for independence in Scotland that was quite close. The United Kingdom had a close vote to leave the European Union a few years ago. And just like everywhere else in the world, they've suffered during the COVID pandemic, the economic crisis, inflation, uh, war in Ukraine. So it's a very uncertain time. I think people are going to be not only feeling personally sad about the loss of a beloved queen, um, but feeling unmoored in terms of their identity um, at her passing. And yeah, that's going to raise questions about the future of Britain and the future of the monarchy for some. All right, Professor Hardy, thank you so much for your insight and sharing some of your time with us tonight. Thank you. Developing news right now out of Uvalde, Texas, where police are investigating a shooting with multiple people injured at Uvalde Memorial Park. So this is just five minutes down the street from Robb Elementary, where 19 students and two teachers were killed back in May. The Texas Department of Public Safety says they suspect it to be gang related. Happened just after 5.30 local time. Two juveniles are currently being treated for injuries and we will bring you more updates as we get them. Mascot police say a man tried to lure two young girls into a vehicle. It happened around 7.30 this morning. Police say the driver was in a new silver Toyota Corolla. He is described as an older Hispanic man who spoke to the children in Spanish. Anyone with any information is encouraged to contact Crime Line 1-800-423-TIPS. Kennedy Space Center is relocating responders. The change near the Artemis launch pad that has firefighters concerned. We're also concerned about what the weather might be look like as we get closer and closer to the weekend. Mallory. We do have the active pattern, Tammy and Sharon, sticking around the next few days with a decent chance for afternoon storms. Some of those storms could even become severe once again with gusty wind and heavy rain. The timing of the activity is coming up on your Weather on the Ones.